Hello and welcome to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode. We're here today for part 8 for the Dutch Grand Prix for the start of the second half of the season after a pretty decent spa. But it's not the way I wanted to start this weekend as we have an issue with the car that we've got to wait to be sorted out. So it's a fuel issue we've got then. This is the R and D. I thought I hadn't really shown it, but we are we have got one of the quicker cars on the grid. So our pace where we've been the last couple of races is sort of thereabouts with the R and D. But our first lap then is gonna put us P6. Which, which is pretty decent as we now go on to our final run and into the very tricky and very odd chicane out of it we come now George puts it on pole the staff in there 7th just in front of us Albert Alonso is in the mix as well we have found just under 4 tenths we cross the line and we will start the race inside the top 10. For years, the people of Zandvoort fondly recalled the Grand Prix they used to hold, and then came along Max Verstappen. Across Europe, the Orange Army sold seats and seats and seats, and now they have their own Grand Prix. It is time for race day in the Netherlands. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position. And the smooth operator, Carlos Sainz, completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Norris, Leclerc, Brown, Hamilton, Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Magnussen, Fittipaldi, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Bottas, Stroll, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Ocon, Joe, Sergeant, Joe. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So they're not good for the Dutch fans. Max has happened all the way down in eighth. If he wants to win on home soil, he's going to have to do a very good drive today. But is it really that? I'd say impressive because he did win from 14th back in Spain but strategy wise we're going to be starting on the softs going to the mediums as we get ready then for the Dutch Grand Prix I do like this track it was very hard but it is a lot of fun on this game the middle sector our car has been very strong so let's go then to the Dutch Grand Prix, it's Mercedes v Ferrari off the line and it's lights out and away we go in the Ferrari it looks to have got a shocker and we're going to go through the middle of the Ferrari he has, he's dropped all the way down behind us we've got, we're now side by side with Vinas Leclerc and now we're through, we've got over to both Ferraris now we're on the back of the Red Bull of oh, Perez, can we find a way past Ultimately, he is going to get away. We're all over the back of Perez as we go into the middle sector. Try and buy our time, it's quite difficult to overtake it. That's why Max is going to have to do a drive of the season. But we couldn't get the drop then. And on to lap three. Here comes Carlos Sainz on it. He goes to the inside, into Tarzan. No, we're going to keep it pinned all the way around the outside. Sainz didn't have the grip, but we did and we stay ahead for at least another lap. Here it is done for one lap later though. At the end of the lap, one to lap four now. Here comes Carlos Sainz again. 
he's going to the inside again and we are going to do copy and paste of the previous lap keep it pinned around the outside that bit of banking I think there is a bit the first car really helping us and we've done the exact same thing to Sites again keeps trying on to the next lap though and now here he tries again this time he's on the outside but it's just a bit too far back Perez is just overtaken Lando just in front of us and like I said back in back in as it's Leclerc and Hamilton going at it Hamilton getting his way through the two Ferraris round the outside goes Lewis Hamilton gets past both of the Ferraris but with Lando I really to beat him in the championship this season I think that has to be the aim but now here comes Leclerc back at Hamilton round the outside he goes at turn one side by side can the Mercedes keep a pin yes he can and it's job done as now this is Ocon Ocon's engine has popped and he's slowing down and I think that's his second retirement of the season his engine popped in the very first episode of this series all the way back in Bahrain and he is out and on the sidelines once again we couldn't really get in touch with Lando and here comes Lewis Hamilton now we've managed to pull away a bit from the Ferraris Hamilton down our inside we hold it to the outside and we're going to try and do it again there this time though Hamilton's got a bit more traction but we still hold around the outside we do drop him off a little bit there that was a bit too aggressive there on my part here comes Hamilton again though he's on the inside this time it looks like he may have the job done we're a bit too far back to try and keep it pinned round the outside and Hamilton is through on us on lap 9 round the bank and we go we have been quick in that middle sector but Hamilton is gone now lap 11 Leclerc on the back of us he's going to go to the inside we're coming off the racing line and Leclerc has hit us and we're going bouncing over the curb through the gravel and me and Leclerc made contact and it was very similar to me and Piastri's incident at Cobbs back at the British Grand Prix we've got away with no damage this time somehow and we're still ahead of the Ferrari I think trying to limit there would be a bit dodgy but this time look at this mugging we've got we're trying to send it back down the inside Leclerc being aggressive there but he did just nearly wipe me out of the race so there's that Leclerc wheel to wheel with Sainz Sainz tried to keep it pin round the outside two Ferraris on different strategies and Sainz has done it round the outside and now here comes Sainz Leclerc's actually lost out to Alonso and is falling back and Sainz is through on his that time it is job done for him we kept him at bay for as long as we could and now this is a lot on the back of us we make a mistake and go way off the track Alonso through and now we're going to be eaten up by Max Verstappen if this goes wrong it could be curtains for us in terms of getting out of the track as down the inside we re overtake Max we keep it clean and he's not getting his way through like he did in Spain, obviously very different track it's a lot harder to overtake than Spain but even with how strong Max is I'd still expect him to get through a bit quicker but on lap 16 we come into the pits to make our one and only stop of the day into the pits we come put on the mediums and we've got a D20 lap you can see but there is some warm parts on the engine but we will fix that in time for the Italian Grand Prix in the next video as we come out of the pits now and now this is Piastri on the back Piastri slowing down it looks like he is slowing down the Australian driver is out looks like he's got a bit of a technical issue or something there 
and it's now two DNFs in this race now. He joins Ocon on the sidelines. It's Romney outside. This is Leclerc. Something is very wrong with that car. Ever since he made contact, he's just been going backwards. Maybe there's a bit of front wing damage. Maybe there's some suspension damage that he's just nursing initially. Because ever since that contact, he has been eaten up. That Ferrari should not be being done by a Haas. And especially now, round the outside goes Albon in a Williams. What is going on with that Ferrari? As this is Fittipaldi now getting his way past past him around the outside. That Ferrari is wounded badly. As this now we're gonna skip all the way onto that 35. It was similar to Canada, we were just keeping these behind at bay. And then the, these mediums just hit the cliff and we had no grip. And we're just inside the top 10, P8, it's been a good result for us. Through though goes Magnussen, um, yeah Magnussen, Alpine to the inside, we're being mugged into turn 1, round the outside we try and go, we've had a bit of a wobble though, and Magnussen's through, we're going to try and get it back up the inside, we've been quick in the middle sector, but this is it then, George Russell, wins the Dutch Grand Prix is going to be another Mercedes one too for the third time I think this season Perez rounds out the podium so at least there was one Red Bull on the podium Max couldn't do it today but we look at our dead tyres as we round the final corner can we hang on and get some positions? There goes Albon. Albon's on the inside. And Fittipaldi with the mugged on the line. And it's a photo finish. And we haven't even got a point. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. This is how close it was then. Through goes Albon. And as we slow it down, look how close. Ah, oh, that's annoying. So frustrating. We're in the points for the entire race and we fall out on the line. But at least as a team, we're still getting some points. You can see there the gap. It finished between me and Fittipaldi, a photo finish. At least if we're not going to get points, at least it's to our teammates. So we still get some points in the constructors. Two DNFs then in terms of Piastri and Ocon. In terms of the championship then, Max is taking a bit of a hit. Science has gained some points in. Mercedes are really coming on strong now. Ever since, since Monaco, because they've been there, just Max denied them in Monaco and Spain. And really since Canada they've done well. They seem to be back. We're still doing alright in the constructors. We're still P6 and not that far off McLaren now, nine points behind. As we go into the Italian Grand Prix next time out, hopefully we won't be mugged on the line in Monza. But we've always been quick round Monza. Hopefully we can have another good race. With it being our home Grand Prix as a team, we are going to be running a special livery. So watch out for that in the next episode at the Italian Grand Prix. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.